Hola, hola, ¿qué tal, Yves? Hola, Lara. ¿Qué tal? Saludos hasta Indonesia, Irwan, muy bien. Hola, Susan, buenas tardes, Sabrina, buenas noches por acá. Qué bien, qué bueno, ya estamos empezando. Hoy tenemos bastantes participantes, many, many participants from South Korea, Alemania, wow, genial. Yo soy mexicana, chicos, so I'm very, very grateful to be here with you today. And is it okay? We're gonna give just a spare time, I think. Yeah, let's do it. So, chicos, gracias por estar el día de hoy aquí. Thank you so much for being here today. Welcome to today's presentation. And it is sponsored by Spring Spanish. If you know about something about Spring Spanish, let me know in the chat. Say C, 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 or no. If you don't know anything, I will let you know in a minute who are we. It is a pleasure to be here with you today. And before we start, I've seen, ¿de dónde eres? I've seen Alemania, I've seen Corea del Sur, I've seen um, Indonesia. What else, guys? Right in the chat. ¿De dónde eres? República Checa, Escocia, Grecia. Wow, genial. Austria, Hong Kong. Oh, ay, gracias, Jin Jung. Muchísimas gracias. Canadá, en Ecuador, pero es Estados Unidos. Alemania. Wow, so many amazing countries, guys. Wow. I am from Mexico, guys. I am from Veracruz, Mexico, the southeast of Mexico. And as I have mentioned previously, today I'm here representing Spring Spanish. And if you're wondering what is this, because you told me many of you don't know, only Jin Jung that knows <laughs> about Spring Spanish. We are a YouTube channel, guys, and we are conformed by five teachers, cinco profesores de México y Venezuela. And here we teach Spanish through chunks. And who am I? Now, finally, I'm going to introduce myself. So, yo soy Maria Fernanda. And if you have seen my videos, well, this is how we teach Spanish. Enseñamos a través de chunks. We teach through chunks. I am one of the Spanish teacher, a teacher that is also in the YouTube channel. And another question, guys. Do you know what is a chunk? Have you learned or have you heard the word chunks in language learning? Let me know. Si, sí, no, si, sí, no. Bits, si, sí, no, yes, no. Big piece, no, no. Wow. Lots of no's. Small bits, related data. Sure. Okay. Si, sí, claro. Perfecto. Let's start with that then. What is a chunk, guys? So listen. Don't worry if you haven't heard this word before today. In Spring Spanish, we believe that you can't learn to speak Spanish just by memorizing words and grammar rules. Yeah, we are those guys. We don't like rules. So, because this just makes you translate in your head. And sometimes, don't you think that it's like a bit complicated when you're trying to translate and you cannot really speak at that moment and you panic? Well, this is why we use the conversation-based chunking method in our channel and in our Spanish courses. And by the way, it's a perfect time to tell you that if you stay at the, at the end of the presentation, you will have free access to our 30-day beginners course based on chunking. And again, what are chunks, Maria? You have been saying, but what is a chunk? Well, I can tell you how to learn chunks, which is better. And you can only learn Spanish by listening a lot to Spanish native speakers. Hear what they say, not what teachers said, but what the native speakers say, how they combine these words together in fixed phrases, and we call them chunks, or this is the method that is the conversation-based chunking. And then you can use it yourself exactly the same way. Think about it. If you have heard a native speaker say, por la tarde, then you know that's correct, right? Because you know that in Spanish we have the noun gender, so you don't have to think if it's el tarde or la tarde. And you just, you can use only say por la tarde without worrying about grammar. And you should still learn some grammar, of course. But, but the trick is to discover these word combinations and learn them by heart 
so you don't have to think about grammar while speaking. And today, guys, I have a, an amazing topic to teach you today. Please take five seconds to grab un bolígrafo y something to grab because I'm going to teach you today. I am a teacher, so I'm going to teach you. First, we have examples for chunks in Spanish, such as nos vemos a las tres. So the word nos vemos, it is a chunk. Por la tarde, mucho gusto. Y a qué hora. And you will know exactly with after this presentation why this is a chunk and why we recommend to learn it this way. Today, you will learn a four-step process to discover to and learn Spanish chunks with TV series. I mean, I guess that you really like to like to watch TV or Netflix or Amazon Prime. Are you watching any TV series right now? Right in the chat right now, are you watching any TV series in Spanish or telenovelas or I don't know, maybe there's a fan of telenovelas here. <laughs> I mean, what better place to listen to how native speakers speak than in Spanish TV series, right guys? I mean, they are literally using the slang, the Mexican slang, the Spanish slang. I can see you're watching La Chica del Cable. Uh, Jane the Virgin, I love Jane the Virgin, it's one of my favorites. Velvet, La Casa de Papel, Vive a Tu Manera, awesome. So, as I said, toma tu bolígrafo, guys, o tu pluma. In Mexico, we say pluma as well. Toma tu pluma y tomen nota de todos los chunks que veas hoy. So, grab your pen and take note of all of the chunks that you will learn today. And I will test you at the end of the presentation. So, as I say in my videos, ¿están listos? ¿Están listos para empezar? Because we're going to put them into practice this method right now. <laughs> okay, let's see, guys. As I say, don't forget, at the end of the presentation, I will give you a QR code so you can access the 30-day beginner's course for free and you can start learning with chunks as well. First movie, let's see if you have seen this, watched this movie before. Roma, una película ganadora del Oscar, an Oscar winning film, and actually it's Mexican film as well. So how do we learn as a chunk? As I tell, there's a four step process. I'm going in to read the scene. It says, I, déjenme ir a preguntar a la patrona, ahorita vengo. That's so much a Mexican slang, but listen, we're listening, we're hearing it in the movie right now. So it will be great for you to learn this way. So the step one of our method is listen a lot to native speakers. And as I said, movies and TV series are perfect for that. In this example, we will take the phrase from this movie. I, déjeme ir a preguntar a la patrona. Ahorita vengo. So that means I, let me go ask the owner. I will be right back. Wow. I will be right back to say ahorita vengo. In Spanish is so easy, but there's no literal translation. That's why step number two is that you can develop the skill of identifying chunks. In this case, ahorita vengo, the, literally that means I will be right back. But I mean, in English, wouldn't it does? We don't. Can we translate ahorita? Since that's so Mexican, it's like I will come soon. I will come now. And if you use this phrase, guys, if you go to Mexico and use this phrase, you will be speaking like a native. So please take note because you will be using it a lot once you um, go and have a holiday in Mexico, probably. Which leads me to step number three: memorize. And how are we going to memorize it? By using them as well, by writing them down. You can use flashcards. I will, I will show you an example with another scene that I have, uh, how to use those flashcards that I'm talking about. So as I said, literally, I come now, I come soon, I come in a moment. That doesn't even exist in English. That's why we would use ahorita vengo. And it's difficult to translate word for word. 
But as I said, with this method, that's not necessary. You have heard our saleswoman, the Mexican saleswoman saying, so you know that native speakers always say, ahorita vengo. So you will learn by heart this phrase. And you will know that every time you want to say, I will be right back in Mexican Spanish, you can say, ahorita vengo. And you didn't need to know the grammar behind it, nor any verb conjugation. So that's the cool thing about it. I hate learning grammar. So <laughs> that's perfect because that's exactly how you learn your mother tongue. So our step number four and the last one, of course, is speak. You have to put it into practice. Let's see the following conversation. I mean, we can see ourselves using this phrase, isn't it? I mean, using ahorita vengo in a real life conversation like this, Maria and Fernando, they say, Maria, vas a salir? Are you going out? And then Fernando replies, si, sí, voy a ir al super, pero ahorita vengo. Probably this is a chunk you wouldn't learn in a tutoring lesson. Nobody might tell you that ahorita vengo means that. So that's why TV, movies, and even music are perfect to learn the slang and the Spanish this way. You want to do another example? I, I think I read in the chat that somebody is watching La Casa de las Flores. Anyone has, has seen that TV series? It's very funny, very sarcastic, very, very Mexican family tradition. So if you would like a good laugh and some drama and suspense, go and watch this TV series as well. Uh, here's the phrase, uh, the dialogue for this um, TV series. Let's hear, guys. Listen first. Step one. Aquí no hay envidias, no hay mentiras, y no hay nada más que puro amor. I said step one, listen, right? Stern, step number two, can you help me? Which chunks could you identify from the following dialogue? Share in the chat, guys. Let me know. What do you think from those? What is a chunk? Okay, Laura says no hay. Angela says no hay. Who else? Who else? No hay nada más que... Nada más que, no hay mentiras, no hay nada más. Wow, you're amazing students. No hay nada más que, no hay, no hay nada más que. That's perfect. I'm going to go with you guys and I'm going to choose for the example, no hay. You know that in Spanish, the verb haber, it's actually used for auxiliary verbs, just, but in English means to have. So it's so confusing. Like, you know that haber is for to do auxiliary pre uh, present or, oh, it's so confusing guys that to be honest, even for me, it's complicated. And that is why instead of learning the, all the rules behind it, you just learn no hay. And you know that no hay will be there isn't or there is no. So just learn the whole as a chunk. And don't worry about the grammar behind it. And next time you go to Mexico, uh, so do you have something? No, no, I. Easy. You don't have to think, oh my God, how do I say there is and then there is no, because there will be no literal translation from English. Again, another example. There here is another scenario would be imagine you run out of food and suddenly you are super hungry and you might say something like, Ay, aquí no hay comida y tengo hambre. Tengo hambre is a chunk as well. I have hungry. We don't say that in English. Tengo hambre. It would be, I am hungry. But tengo hambre is how you say in Spanish. So, aquí no hay comida y tengo hambre. Okay, entonces vamos al restaurante. As you can see, these phrases or chunks, as we call them, are very useful on a daily basis conversation. I'm going to do a first test with you guys. Let's see if you paid att attention because we're going to give you more and more and more exercises. Exercise number one. Let's use the chunks we use, okay? I gave you in brackets the English way, but you need to write in the chat the correct answers. So we have, vamos a ir al cine hoy o no? 
No, blank. Ninguna película buena. Bueno, yo sí voy. I will be right back. So, la primera, we have no hay, no hay, 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 no hay. Ahorita vengo, ahorita vengo, ahorita vengo, no hay ninguna. Ajá. These are really good students. I like these students. Mucho, me gustan. <laughs> I see some good answers in there, guys. Let's see. ¿Vamos a ir al cine hoy o no? No, no hay ninguna película buena. Bueno, yo sí voy. Ahorita vengo. Bye, bye. If you got them right, put yourself a mark. You got two out of two. Good job. Excellent, guys. Excellent. So let's go. Uh, now that we're in a rush, we're going to do two. Te toca a ti. Te toca a ti. It's also a chunk because we're referring to say, it is your turn. We could say, es tu turno, but it would be less usual, like in Mexico, which you will normally say, te toca a ti. So, les toca a ustedes. Te toca a ti to do the following exercise. Yes, Valerie, me toca a mí, muy bien. Listo. Primer ejercicio, la boda de la abuela. First exercise, the granny's wedding. La boda de la abuela. Es una película mexicana as well. Sorry, this time I, I chose Mexicans because I know that in Expolingua you have different accents, different slangs, and today I'm here to represent Mexico as well. We have the following scene. Listen, step one, guys. Necesito ir a buscar a Natalia. ¿Me lo cuidas un momento? Te toca a ti. Which chunks? Could you identify, identify from that scene? Órale, escribe, escribe, escribe. ¿Cuál es el chunk en esta escena? Okay, we have necesito ir a, necesito, necesito ir a, me lo cuidas. Te toca a ti, that's from the other slide. Necesito ir a, lo cuidas, necesito ir a. Okay, un momento. Me lo cuidas. Those are great examples, guys. Good job, because you are developing the skills of finding or identifying a chunk. However, I'm going to look... Good job, Rainer. I'm going to take that example. Buscar a. And I'm going to tell you why I chose this example, because in English, buscar a literally means look for. But in Mexico, or at, at least in this scene, that means picking someone up. So he's using, necesito ir a buscar a Natalia. That means I am going to take my car and look for Natalia, pick her up and bring her to the house. So complicated to learn that when it will be so difficult. So, but if you continuously watch this in TV series, in movies, you will know that the fact of buscar a someone, that means they're going to, go and drive her, or pick her, or pick him, whatever, from, from somewhere. Which leads me to the example I, I say for you about the flashcards. How you could memorize as well the chunks using this device or this uh, tool. You're gonna have in the front of your flashcard how you heard it in TV series or in the movie or maybe in a song. You're going to write here with a blank space and the translation in English or even your mother tongue. Because I see that you have also, um, I see somebody put from Germany, wrote that they also have some similar translation, like, ich habe hunger, I think uh, somebody mentioned, and it would be the same in Spanish. So, depends on you what works better. You can use here your mother tongue. And then in the back, you will put the correct word or the correct chunk in this case. That will be a perfect way for you to start memorizing those words. And that's a way to pick up, uh, doesn't matter which slang. In this case, we're talking about Mexican chunks, but it's still Spanish. And it doesn't matter if people is from Venezuela, Colombia, or España, they will understand you as we are trying to learn Spanish. And of course, step number four in real life, 
conversation, very easy. Necesito ir a buscar a mi papá al aeropuerto. I mean, how many of you haven't said this phrase in your mother tongue or in another language before? So this is how you would say it in Spanish. A great example, necesito ir a buscar a someone at the airport, at, al hotel, al restaurante, a mi casa, or whatever. Who wants more examples? I have more exercises for you. And this time, I'm trying to help you less, huh? because I want you to give you the, the tools, but you need to practice. We only have half an hour to, to really, really learn a new method. Número dos, nailed it, Mexico. Do you know this actor? Al actor Omar Chaparro, muy famoso, eh? Muy famoso en México, and he's the host of the show. Omar Chaparro is also a comedian, un comediante. So, en esta escena, he says, un poquito. Me gusta la vainilla, pero tiene de más. Your turn. Te toca a ti. Identify. Which chunks could you identify from that scene? Me gusta, tiene de más, pero tiene de más. Me gusta, tiene de más, tiene de más, un poquito. <laughs> Ajá. Wow, muy bien. Excelente, qué buenos estudiantes son. Un poquito, un poquito, tiene de más. Excelente. For the purpose of the example, I'll chose tiene And I'm going to put vanilla in brackets. I'm going to explain you now in a bit why. Tiene vainilla de más. Which could mean too many or too much, depending on the context. But here, un poquito is a chunk. Great job for those who said, Exan, Karen, the many, many said un poquito. Uh, me gusta, of course, me gusta is a chunk and it's really, really, really used and very useful. Y tiene de más, something that we don't hear often. However, it is a chunk. And the reason I put the vanilla in brackets is because here we are saying, me gusta la vainilla, pero tiene de más. We are referring about vanilla here. That's why here I was trying to make the statement. So if you want to use it in a real life conversation, if there is no noun before, you might have to use it here as well. So same flashcards, you can do este pastel, another example, here I'm using another example, it doesn't have to be the one from the movie or from the, uh, the show. Este pastel, blank, vainilla, blank. So, este pastel tiene vainilla de más. And this is how you would do your flashcards here in the front and in the back for you. Pretty easy, you, that's how you will start to memorize them. So, next time you have to use it in a real life conversation, such as, él es millonario, tiene dinero de más. He's a millionaire and he has too much money. If you know someone like this, it's fine, eh? <laughs> so, tiene dinero de más. That's how we will use the chunk that we just learned. However, as you mentioned, me gusta o un poquito, they are also amazing examples of a chunks. De nada, Florence. See you, see you later. Me encantó. Bien, saludos. Eh, después tenemos Solteras, otra película, another movie. Tenemos la escena. Ana, te juro que cuando me enteré me dieron muchas ganas de llorar. Help me, guys. Identify the chunks in here. Que okay, tenemos, te juro. Me enteré, te juro que me enteré. It's a really good two. <laughs> Ganas de, cuando me enteré, me dieron muchas ganas de, that's an amazing example, muchas ganas de, me enteré, me enteré. Great guys, you have a good eye for this. Excellent. I'm going to choose the chunk, me dieron muchas ganas de. Because in English, it would, it's like, as you can see, it would be like, I really felt like, or I really wanted, and it's completely different from Spanish. So it will be much better to learn as a whole. Y me dieron muchas ganas de could be applied as well in different situations. Let's do another example here, real life. Me dieron muchas ganas de gritar. Ah! 
cuando vi a mi artista favorito. So you are at a concert and you're watching your favorite artist and of course me dieron muchas ganas de gritar, llorar, reír, whatever. So that's an amazing example of another chunk. By the way, guys, are you taking notes? Because we're going to test you at the end, huh? <laughs> oh, thank you, Miss Naminga. It's a pleasure, my colleague. Awesome. So let's do the last one. Esa es una telenovela. It's more, more like una telenovela moderna, a very modern telenovela. It's from Telemundo. Probably if you have heard that before, you will see. And Cien Días para Enamorarnos. I really enjoy that telenovela as well. And they have the following dialogue. So, ¿me confirma número de celular? That's pretty easy, guys. By now, you're experts. So, what's the chunk? Me confirma, me confirma, me confirma. Celular, no, celular is a noun. Número de celular, okay. Me confirma, me confirma. Awesome, let's take me confirma. In English, as you can see, it wouldn't be like confirm me or me confirm. It doesn't exist. It would be can you confirm to me? So again, no word to word translation possible. And this will come really, really handy in telephone conversations or when checking it at an airline or at a hotel or when you need uh, any official documents, for example. Um, another example of a real life conversation could be, Buenas tardes, tengo una reservación. Con gusto, me confirma su nombre, por favor. And then you will say, tu nombre, of course. You, you probably, they probably won't say cómo te llamas o cómo se llama because they are trying to confirm something that it's already on the system. So it might be more common to hear me confirma. And if we want to say in tú, we say me confirmas. So let's recap before I test you guys. Really quick recap. You can take a picture of this because it's going to help you a lot in the future. If you want to apply this conversation-based chunking method and also remember that at the end, we're almost done and you will be able to access the 30-day beginners course with this method that I am just teaching you as well. So first, number one, listen a lot. A lot of native speakers talking it could be TV series, movies, podcasts, if you prefer to do only audio or whatever, but listen, listen, that's exactly how you learn your mother tongue, remember? Second, identify chunks. Today, you have been doing a great job. I'm very proud of you because you got exactly the method that I'm trying to teach you today. Number three, memorize them with flashcards by, uh, you can write them down doing this kind of exercise I'm, uh, I am trying to teach you. Or you can watch our videos because usually I leave you some homework or <laughs> we test you at the same time. So by the end of each video, you can have a new learning. And of course, number four, speak. You have to use them. And eventually, if you are with a native speaker or with a friend or someone that is in the same path as you learning Spanish, you can practice the new chunks that you learn from the TV series or movies or whatever you are watching. So guys, I hope that was very clear to you. It's quiz time. We have to hurry up because time is almost up. And are you ready? Did you write all the chunks that we learned today? There were cuatro en, to cuatro en total. Yeah, cuatro en total. Listos. ¿Están listos, chicos? Sí. Uh -huh. Venga. Vamos a empezar. Write your answers in the chat. Remember. This is a very basic conversation. La recepcionista del hotel con el cliente. So, la recepcionista says, Buenas tardes, señora. Bienvenida al Hotel Reforma. Blank. Su nombre y su apellido, por favor. Okay, I see some good answers in there. Cliente. Sí, es María Fernández. Por cierto, ¿tienen restaurante? Ay, Blank. Comer algo antes de subir a mi habitación. 
Okay, okay. I see some different answers in there. So I think the first one, we agree, everybody, that... Buenas tardes, señora. Bienvenida al Hotel Reforma. Me confirma su nombre y su apellido. And the second one, great job. No me ganas de llorar because that's crying, but me dieron muchas ganas de... Sí, es María Fernández. Por cierto, tiene el restaurante. Me dieron muchas ganas de comer algo antes de subir a mi habitación. Great job, guys. Second exercise. Sí, claro que tenemos. De hecho, contamos con 10 restaurantes, así que blank, opciones blank. Y el cliente, muy bien, voy a blank mi hijo para ir al restaurante primero. Gracias. Muy bien, Eric. Muy bien, Esa. Muy bien, muy bien, muy bien, muy bien. Uh -huh, muy bien. Excelente. La primera es, sí, claro que tenemos, de hecho, contamos con 10 restaurantes, así que tiene opciones de más. Y muy bien, voy a buscar a mi hijo para ir al restaurante primero. Gracias. You are an awesome audience, awesome students. But guys, this is the end of the presentation. I really, 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 really hope that you enjoy our class today or my class today. And you can learn more by watching on YouTube, more videos with examples, suggestions, and we even have um, different slangs and different uh, TV series. And for example, from Colombia, from Venezuela, you, you really, really need to start uh, listening to other slang as well, not only Mexican or from Spain, but from other parts in Latin America. And as I promised, Here is the QR code. Go now. You can have the 30-day beginner's course with, uh, to learn with chunks. And also, you will have the presentation that you just hear today. So it was really a pleasure, guys, to work with an amazing crowd and really interactive. I can see. Thank you so much. Ay, gracias. Muchísimas gracias a todos. Yes, Mario, there will be a lot of recommendations in our videos and also the presentation at the end, you can have it and you will get the links for it.